بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله يعطيكم العافية today إن شاء الله we will talk about lecture three we will focus on developing pharmacy practice a focus on a patient care last lecture we talked about pharmacists in a healthcare team from a policy perspective from a policy point of of view today إن شاء الله we will uh, focus in this lecture um, uh, about pharmacists in patient care from practice perspective, from practice point of view. The main learning ob objectives that can be achieved after finishing this lecture. During this lecture, we will describe the concept of pharmaceutical care. Then we will discuss terms such as drug therapy problem, and we will provide an examples that are relevant to your practice to practice in Jordan and that could clarify these terms uh, then we will list uh, together the main steps in the pharmaceutical care process and then we will indicate how these steps will contribute to the good pharmaceutical practice to providing good pharmaceutical care after that we will list the main element of a pharmaceutical care plan then we will describe the therapeutic follow-up outcome monitoring required to facilitate the continuity of care provided to the patient. Then at the end, we will discuss mechanisms that are required uh, for identifying priorities for pharmaceutical care resource limited environments and uh, to identify also uh, one priority specific to a practice in Jordan. First of all, it's important to remind you that uh, the type of the, far, the professional services pharmacists to provide is um, um, in a variety of setting and these uh, services uh, are uh, in a response to lo local, national, international needs. Um, these, service, these services um, uh, focus on population and or uh, individual patient. So the service could be uh, targeted at the population level or uh, at individual basis, I mean case to case. Um, last lecture we discussed what pharmaceutical public health mean and what the differences between the pharmaceutical public health and and the pharmaceutical care, which means at the individual level. The pharmaceutical public health includes services to population, such as local guidelines, treatment protocol, some services that are provided at the community pharmacy, like uh, medicine use review, a new medicine service, the NMS, uh, the national medicine policies, and also essential medicine list. The term pharmacovigilance needs uh, assessment and pharmacoepidemiology. Now it's important to get all of you familiarized with some uh, kind uh, of definition that are important and increase uh, the level of knowledge um, for all of you. First of all, we have to define what pharmaceutical public, public health means. According to Walker, the uh, pharmaceutical public health means uh, the application of pharmaceutical knowledge, skills, and resources to the science and art of preventing diseases, prolonging life, promoting, protecting, and improving health for all through the organized effort of society. In a contrast, pharmaceutical care is delivered at the individual patient level. So this is this is clarify or exemplify the, the differences between the term pharmaceutical public health and pharmaceutical care. The key the key term is that pharmaceutical care is develop, is delivered at the individual patient level. This concept was first defined by uh, Mikhail. Uh, uh, in 1979, uh, um, uh, Mikhail defined pharmaceutical care as the care that given a, to a patient require and receives, which assure safe and rational uh, drug usage. So, um, the pharmaceutical care that is given at the individual level uh, should be assured or quality assured by two terms: safe and rational. We will talk about these terms later in this lecture. 
Since 1979, there have been many changes to this definition. But another good definition that I personally like about defining pharmaceutical care is this definition, because each word counts in this definition. Pharmaceutical care is the responsible provision of drug therapy for the purpose of achieving definite outcome that improve or maintain the patient quality of life. So pharmaceutical care is a responsible provision. So there is a huge responsibility that came from pharmacists about the provision of drug therapy provided for the patient. So what's the purpose of this drug therapy? Is to achieve definite outcome. Is not to achieve outcome. Definite outcome. Why definite outcome? Because the, the ultimate purpose is to improve or maintain patient quality of life. Is to improve the outcome of receiving the rational pharmaceutical care or evidence-based pharmaceutical care. The practice of pharmaceutical care is new in a contrast to what pharmacists have been doing for years. But the key, the key concept, the key word to this a new type of practice or, or providing the pharmaceutical care is the responsible provision. There is a responsibility as we defined earlier in the previous slide. And you have to achieve definite outcome. Why you have to achieve definite outcome? Because the ultimate goal is to uh, equality assure um, and improve uh, the patient quality of life after receiving the, the pharmaceutical care provided by healthcare professionals such as pharmacists. It's important for you to understand that whether pharmacists are reviewing a prescription or a patient medication record or talking to a patient or responding to a symptoms, they are automatically assessing patient needs. They are automatically assess, uh, prioritizing and creating a plan, we mean here a, th a therapeutic plan, pharmaceutical care plan to meet pa these patient needs. But what they often fail to do is to accept the responsibility for this care. Accepting the responsibility means that the patient should be, uh, sorry, the pharmacist should be uh, competent enough to uh, provide the pharmaceutical care. The pharmacist should have a plenty amount of knowledge about um, 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 about uh, medicine, about information that uh, are related to medicines. Um, we mean here is not just the vast amount. Pharmacy should be an expert of medicine, should be medicine expert, should be drug expert. If the pharmacists are not competent enough to be a drug expert or a um, um, medicine expert, then they, they fail to accept the responsibility of uh, providing such type of care. As a result, they may not adequately document, monitor, and review the care plan because simply they, they may uh, are not um, uh, confident enough to know whether the practice they provided are the evidence-based rational pharmaceutical care. Accepting such responsibility is essential to the practice of pharmaceutical care. So by understanding uh, this, such a, a responsibility, by understanding uh, the type and the level of competence the pharmacist should have by understanding that the pharmacist uh, is an expert of medicine or expert of drug. Uh, after that responsibility, um, such responsibility will be um, highly rewarded when providing pharmaceutical care. The practice of pharmaceutical care is about pharmacist responsibility to the patient for the prevention of medicine-related illness. So it's a pharmacist responsibility to prevent any medicine-related illnesses reported by the patient. So it's highly important. It's an ethical um, um, a responsibility. In this practice, for example, pharmacists can evaluate patient medicine-related needs, determine uh, whether one or more drug therapy problem uh, exist and if so works with the patient and other healthcare professional to design implement and monitor a care plan and here it's very important for the pharmacist to act as a team worker because pharmacist is a member of the healthcare team pharmacist is not working alone pharmacist is working with a health professional this plan that are developed by the pharmacist should be kept as simple as possible it should be very simple so that 
uh, it can communicate it easily within the healthcare professional and also uh, and also patient can understand the pharmaceutical care provided uh, to them by pharmacist the care plan would aim to resolve the actual drug therapy problems and prevent potential drug therapy problems so the aim of the pharmaceutical care the ultimate aim is to resolve the actual drug with or, uh, the, 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 sorry um, the care plan would aim to resolve the therapy dr drug problems um, whether it's actual or potential which means treat or prevent so what's a drug therapy problem drug therapy problem is defined as an undesirable event that a patient may experience that involve or is suspected to, to involve drug therapy and that actually or potentially interfere with the desired patient outcome that actually or potentially interfere with the uh, patient quality of life so this is um, um, describe uh, the uh, uh, what does this term uh, define simply what a drug therapy problem is from now on uh, the slides are highly important and you have to understand each step if you have an uh, uh, if you have a question please don't hesitate to send a message uh, through the electronic learning system uh, that is provided by Zarqa University uh, and please don't uh, hesitate to ask any question from now on because these information are highly important you have to, in to understand the systematic approach when you deliver pharmaceutical care to the patient so um, when delivering a pharmaceutical care pharmacist should be providing should provide the pharmaceutical care in a structured way in a systematic way in a systematic approach and in order to do so there are four steps uh, four major steps to do so step one is you have to assess patient drug therapy needs and identify actual and potential drug therapy problem this is highly important because if if the assessment is not rational then then step two step three step four will not provide it at 100 uh, percent correct will not be rational when uh, doing uh, delivering uh, and uh, when delivering the pharmaceutical care to the patient so in step one pharmacist should assess should evaluate what are the drug therapy needs or problems related to this patient should identify if there is an actual drug therapy problem or a potential drug therapy problems that may occur in the future and the pharmacy should prevent uh, these kinds of uh, drug therapy problems or treat in step two you the pharmacist will start develop a care plan to resolve and prevent the drug therapy problems but before before uh, going into step two the pharmacist in step one after finishing step one should review uh, the assessment made uh, against evidence-based practice should review the information collected from the patient uh, that help the pharmacist identify the drug therapy the patient drug therapy problem against whether these information are evidence-based I mean the high level of practice you know the evidence-based we we described evidence-based practice uh, 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 in the previous lecture and uh, if you remember the hierarchy the lowest evidence-based practice is opinion experiences and books and the highest is meta-analysis or meta-synthesis of a systematic review so pharmacists during assessment should target the highest level of evidence-based and review the assessment against the highest level of evidence-based practice then after doing the review the pharmacist can safely start developing a care plan to resolve and or prevent the drug therapy problems after finishing uh, this step again pharmacists should review the care plan developed the initial care plan developed uh, to target resolve or prevent the drug therapy problems against the highest evidence of uh, pharmacy pr uh, practice the rationale of uh, pharmacy practice the evidence-based pharmacy practice uh, during step three uh, the pharmacist after reviewing step two should implement the care plan 
and here we mean by implementation is that um, at the end of this step far the patient can receive treatment and before patient receiving treatment it's highly important that the pharmacist should uh, review the implementation of the care plan against the highest evidence-based practice whether and this assembly can be asked by the pharmacist the pharmacist can ask him or herself whether the care plan that will be implemented to the patient is rational evidence-based or not uh, the final step is to evaluate and review the care plan Now, this slide demonstrates the systematic approach to the delivery of evidence-based pharmaceutical care. As we described in the previous slide, step one is to assess needs and identify drug problems. Step two is to develop a care plan. Step three is to implement the care plan. And step four is to monitor and review the care plan. Let's say that during step four, uh, for example, patient is re receiving warfarin and as part of monitoring uh, the, the physician uh, uh, would ask to uh, um, like a lab test of the INR international normalized ratio and ac uh, according to, to the lab result uh, the physician will ask uh, uh, the patient to come back uh, to the clinic uh, for the evaluation this is just an example to clarify this is a, a medicine related example to clarify the last step uh, or step four of monitoring and review the care plan but generally speaking it can apply to anything for example like patient will come uh, visit the doctor during uh, at the clinic and the doctor like maybe uh, after one month two or three months during that visit the the, the physician will review the pharmaceutical care plan to the or the, the medical plan, uh, care plan given to the patient and if there is a pharmacist related uh, 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 actual or potential drug therapy problem the physician will consult the pharmacist to review the care plan and if there is a problem the cycle will repeat so the problem if there is a problem in step 4 we would not review step 4 you would review the pharmaceutical care given from step 1 back to step 4 so it's kind of a cycle you have to repeat the cycle and you have to go back to step 1 and ending up in step 4 okay so it's highly important to un to understand the concept provided in this slide the concept of providing systematic approach to delivery of pharmaceutical care if you do have any question about this slide, please don't hesitate to ask me by sending message through the electronic uh, e-learning uh, system provided by Zarqa University. Let's talk about each step in details. In step one, as we previously said, pharmacy should assess the patient drug therapy needs and identify actual and potential drug therapy problems. Here, it's the good communication needs to be established within patient care and other member of healthcare team. As I said previously, you are as a pharmacist working as a part or a member of healthcare team. You are not working in a vacuum. You are not working alone. Okay. So, why uh, the pharmacist should understand uh, the teamwork uh, concepts and basics? Because in order for the pharmacist to collect, synthesize, and interrupt, review the information, the relevant information about patient um, this require interact with other healthcare professional for example during patient medication or uh, clinical uh, reviewing clinical record you have to go to medical record you have to ask other healthcare provider for help or assessment a pharmacist is important for the pharmacist to take a full account of all patient and medication related factor because this is your job this is your responsibility this is the responsible provision of you uh, uh, that you, t you should be responsible during providing the rational evidence-based pharmaceutical care so pharmacists must take full account of all patient and medication factor that may predispose patient to the risk related to drug therapy uh, problems so let's talk about this uh, first case study um, in this case, Mrs. W, a 53-year-old woman, has had a gastrointestinal, uh, gastrointestinal acid-related disorder 
uh, is a gastroesophageal reflux disease diagnosed by endoscopy. Mrs. W has a history of asthma, hypertension, and duodenal ulcer. Her common drug therapy include amlodipine, uh, 10 mg in the morning, salbutamol inhaler, two puffs as required, piclometazone inhaler, um, 20 microgram twice daily, and theophylline 300 mg twice daily. So uh, the patient received medication for hypertension, that is amlodipine, and uh, three medication for asthma, that are salbutamol inhaler, piclometazone inhaler, and theophylline. Mrs. W uh, has recently undergone successful H. pylori eradication therapy, which has been confirmed by carbonurea pretest. Mrs. W smokes 10 cigarettes a day and has a body mass index of 35 and does not uh, drink alcohol. First of all, you have to identify lifestyle, medicine, and disease factor for Mrs. W. This is part of a step one assessment. So starting with the lifestyle, patient body mass index is 35, as written in the previous slide. So the patient is considered obese and should try to lose weight. But how obesity affect gastroesophageal reflux disease? Jared is the same like Gord because British accent write oesophagus as O-E. So Jared is the same as Gord, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Just to clarify this point. So how, just to turn back to what we to, we have talked, uh, I have talked about previously. So how ob obesity affect gastroesophageal reflux disease? Ob obese patients are more sensitive to the presence of acid in the esophagus. Hiatal hernia capable of promoting gastroesophageal reflux disease by several mechanisms and is more prevalent among obese patients. Obese have increased intra-abdominal pressure that displaces the lower esophageal sphincter and increase the gastroesophageal gradient. Finally, vagal abnormalities associated with obesity may cause a higher output of a bile and pancreatic enzyme which make the refluxate more toxic to the esophageal mucosa. The second factor that is related to lifestyle is smoker. Nicotine can cause reflux by reducing lower esophageal sphincter tone. We may ask if she drinks alcohol, coffee, cola, tea, which would exacerbate gastroesophageal reflux disease due to their caffeine content. Remember, some patients will not um, displace information easily to you. So, as 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 uh, uh, written in the case. The patient said like uh, they don't drink alcohol but that is not clearly identified because sometimes patients uh, they, they understand drinking alcohol is drinking high amount of alcohol or drinking high amount of coffee or drinking co high amount of cola or tea but if you ask the question again in appropriate manner they will say okay we we drink one cup of coffee each day but not large amount of coffee and then here is important to identify the right information provided by the patient. Why you ask about coffee, uh, cola, tea, or alcohol? Because these all are, can exacerbate gastroesophageal reflux disease due to their caffeine content or high caffeine content. Now, number two, what are the drug factor? Uh, drug factors that may uh, required to be assessed by uh, uh, or identified by a pharmacist. First, calcium channels blockers received amlodipine can reduce the lower esophageal sphincter tone, which can lead to acid reflux. So, what can we change to pendroflomethiazide? It's not an easy, it's not your responsibility as a pharmacist in Jordan to do so because you are not a prescriber. But here we are uh, assessing, we are evaluating patient case. So, is calcium channels blocker? The only reason that exacerbate lower esophageal sphincter disease, you put this in the balance. What is the benefit of changing calcium channel blocker and what is the risk of that? So my advice to you is always to consult the cardiologist. You can refer this patient. You can clarify the problem to the cardiologist and then you refer patient uh, to the cardiologist. Bendroflomethiazide is thiazide diuretics, uh, preferred and used in in the UK, the dose of bendoflomethiazide can start from 2.5 mg up to uh, 10 mg uh, 
uh, uh, daily. Um, as you know, if if as you have been taught or learned from uh, therapeutic clinical pharmacy and therapeutic courses, uh, I think therapeutic one, uh, cardiovascular uh, diseases are covered in therapeutic one. Uh, if you remember that uh, ideally or classically, if there is no contraindication to the use of thiazide, it's the classical first line drug you start with. Uh, with, with uh, the patient uh, to treat hypertension um, but we can't decide whether the uh, in this case uh, we can't have a confirmed decision whether the pharmacist uh, the pharmacist uh, the, the patient uh, should stop calcium channels blockers and start another medicine we have we shall require uh, a, an evaluation and review from the cardiologist then after that we will collect other information that could be relevant uh, to providing such changes uh, to the patient. Uh, theophylline uh, as a medicine also reduces lower esophageal sphincter tone and is used for asthma. If appropriate, could stop theophylline without adding on therapy or replace theophylline with another drug such as salmeterol. What does this mean? As you also have been taught in Therapeutics 2, Clinical Pharmacy and Therapeutics 2, when we talked about asthma, you know there is a stepwise approach in asthma, step up and step down. This patient is using theophylline without taking long-term, uh, 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 long-acting, sorry, long-acting beta-2 agonist salmeterol. So here is either the information is missing or uh, the patient is receiving inappropriate treatment, in, uh, incorrect treatment, okay? So you have to review uh, this point import, uh, because this is important. Uh, but again, you can't step theophylline unless you collect the right information about the patient because we don't know whether this patient is not receiving long-acting beta-2 agonist or not, is receiving or not because, um, but in the case, it's not written. So if you want to act theoretically, you can say, okay, salmeterol is not received, then uh, why theophylline is, is prescribed then? Because theophylline should be prescribed in the stepwise approach in the higher step after the patient receiving long acting beta 2 agonists such as salmeterol. What are the disease factors? We talked about gastroesophageal reflux disease, and the diagnosis may have been masked by long term treatment of duodenal ulcer. It's written clearly that the patient recently successfully healed or eradicated by. Uh, the H. pylori eradication, uh, successful H. pylori eradication. This is not uncommon, okay? This means that the patient is receiving um, um, imoprazole as part of successful H. pylori eradication, and the use of imoprazole during this COVID can mask serious gastroesophageal reflux path pathological uh, uh, process uh, going on in the uh, patient's body. Atypical presentation include asthma symptoms linked to acid reflux, okay? So we don't know whether uh, this uh, atypical presentation affect asthma symptoms, uh, exacerbation, or, or diagnosis even. But here, it's important to, to collect further information to understand more. So up to now, if we just evaluate each case in this way by identifying patient-related factors such as age, race, gender, or, for example, identifying disease, disease factor that the patient have or identifying uh, a, a drug factor, it will be uh, easier for you to provide a systematic approach and it allows you as a pharmacist to identify actual or potential drug therapy problem as illustrated in this step. Now, this is important uh, uh, to, uh, uh, the, this table is important as it clarifies to you the type and the categories of drug therapy problems. And you have to understand and to memorize each part of each categories. Let's talk about first appropriate indication for the patient. Patient either requires drug therapy or is receiving unnecessary drug therapy. So required drug therapy, but not receiving or receiving unnecessary drug therapy. So let's start with the first group needing a drug therapy, but not receiving it. First example is untreated indication, primary essential hypertension, untreated with thiazide 
Failure to give additional drug therapy. The second example is failure to give additional drug therapy for an existing condition. Hypertension poorly controlled because of failure to add beta blocker or thiazide to the thiazide, for example. The third example is failure to give prophylactic therapy. Low dose aspirin as antiplatelet prophylaxis in ischemic heart disease. These are just an example on the patient need a drug therapy problem but not receiving it. The second category is receiving unnecessary drug therapy problem. For example, the first example is like there is no medical indication present. Antibiotic is given or prescribed for viral infection. The second example, addictive recreational drug use, heroin, cocaine, and amphetamines. The third example is non-drug therapy, uh, more appropriate, coronary artery bypass grafting in severe angina. Okay. The fourth example, duplicate drug therapy, transdermal nitrate patches and oral nitrate. The final example is the drug is being used to treat avoidable adverse drug reaction. Like for example, levodopa, levodopa is prescribed for movement disorder caused by metoclopramide when domperidone could be prescribed instead. Okay, so these just as examples that clarify uh, each of the two categories. Then the second, so first is is appropriate indication for for the medication the first big theme or category is appropriate indication for medication the second big theme or category is the most effective medication the patient is not uh, sorry the patient is receiving the wrong medicine or the dosage is too low so the first subcategory is receiving the wrong medicine for example dosage form inappropriate sustained release antihypertensive drug in patient with colostomy contraindication present beta blocker administered to an asthmatic uh, or uncontrolled asthmatic patient, a condition refractory to drug, high dose inhaled steroid in a patient with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease who are not responsive to steroid, the drug not indicated for condition, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs given long term for osteoarthritis with no inflammation present when simple analgesic would be effective. The last example is more effective drug available, statin more effective than fibrates for primary hyperlipidemia patient. The second sub big uh, sorry the second sub category of or sub theme is dosage too low. For example, wrong dose, low dose of AC inhibitor in heart failure when patient could benefit from higher dose. Existing tolerance caused by failure to observe eight hour nitrate free period. The third example is duration inappropriate three day course of antibiotic for COBD patient with recurrent chest infection that require a higher duration. So the duration is inappropriate here. Loss efficacy due to incorrect storage, interrupted cold chain for vaccine, incorrect administration, poor inhaler technique. This is classical example of, uh, uh, of incorrect administration for asthma patient. The last example is reduced absorption due to drug interaction, chelation of tetracycline and iron. The third category third big theme is the safest medication is the patient taking or receiving too much of the correct drug or is the patient experiencing clinically significant adverse drug reaction so too much of the correct drug dosage too high for indication 5 mg pendroflomethiazide for for mild hypertension wrong dose more than 4 g of paracetamol per day for an adult you, you should not target the maximum dose even if the medicine such as paracetamol high therapeutic index medicine but does there a need to go for such upper high or maximum dose of uh, paracetamol duration inappropriate example 10 day course of antibiotic for uncomplicated tract infection increased serum level due to drug interaction thiophilin and ciprofloxacin leading to thiophilin toxicity uh, the second subcategory or sub theme is Adverse drug reaction, for example, unsafe drug for patient using contraceptive for patient with history of deep vein thrombosis. Second example is allergic reaction, anaphylaxis to penicillin. Okay, drug interaction, beta blocker and verapamil causing atrioventricular block, AV block. The fourth example is dosage increase too fast, phenytoin dose increase zero order kinetic. Okay. The last example is undesirable effect. For example, autotoxicity with aminoglycoside. Autoandrenal toxicity of aminoglycoside. 
The fourth example is patient adherence and convenience to receiving a treatment. You, you, you have to remember that we have patient counseling, patient education, and patient coaching. For patient counseling, we said compliance, patient education, adherence, and patient uh, coaching concordance. You have to remember, uh, and it's highly important to understand this term. It's already described in the previous lectures. So you have to understand the differences between compliance, adherence, and concordance in a relation to patient um, uh, counseling, education, and coaching, respectively. Uh, for patient adherence and convenience, example, product not available, local or national supply problems, product not affordable to the patient or the government health service. Uh, medicine can't be swallowed. Stroke patient with dysphagia, for example. Instruction not understood, remembered, or even agreed by the patient. Medicine not taken. Health beliefs, cultural, or other reason. Now, this case study is a homework for you. is a task for you where you have to read this case and you will have to identify drug therapy problems for the above patient and identify whether the the they are actual or potential. So for this case, it's, it's, it's highly important for you to read this case and try to mimic the way we solved the previous case. So it's a homework for you. So please do a homework. And if you have any question about this case, please, again, don't hesitate. Uh, don't hesitate to ask me by sending message or an email through the e-learning or the email system provided by Zarqa University. So let's start talk about step two. In step two, you have to develop a care plan to resolve and or prevent drug therapy problems. Driving, resolve the actual or prevent the potential drug therapy problem. You have to remember is that not all patients may progress to step two. For example, no problems may have been identified in step one or you may not be able to meet the needs of particular patient due to severe resource limitation. But this is a very rare case. Most of the patient will progress to step two. If later is the reason the drug therapy problem identified should be documented and brought to attention of the patient and the healthcare team and advice provided why this is an important question okay so if the later is the reason and the drug therapy problem identified should be documented both to the uh, attention of the patient and the healthcare team and advice provided what does this mean this means that, for example, if you are unable as a pharmacist to, you are not able to meet the need of a particular patient due to severe resource limitation, you have to refer patient to, to another healthcare professional where, where, where uh, pharmaceutical care or medical care can be uh, provided. This is a highly important ethical uh, issue if you don't so, okay? If you don't do so, okay? So this is... This is why you can't do that, because it is highly unethical that as a result of a severe limitation or resource limitation, you are unable to meet the needs of particular, then you ask patient to leave. No, you have to refer, you have to document the situation, you put the attention to the patient that you are, you are referring patient to another healthcare team where resources is not limited and the pharmaceutical or medical care should be provided okay so during step two we have uh, many examples here but first in step two you have to prioritize drug therapy problems okay in step one once identified once drug therapy problem is identified as a result of um, as a result of assessment or evaluation, you have to prioritize the drug therapy problems within the context of the overall clinical management of the patient as uh, will be clarified or described or illustrated in the next case. Here is important that your prioritization uh, be based, uh, be evidence-based, be based on the evidence-based practice, rational uh, pharmacy uh, uh, practice okay the second you have you identify these are therapeutic objective and proposed action a statement should be made of what pharmacists intend to achieve for a patient in a relation to each drug therapy problem the statement should be agreed with the patient and the healthcare team 
this therab agreement is highly important. This therabitic objective should be expressed as a measurement or measurable outcome to be achieved within a defined time scale. Okay. In deciding on the most appropriate action, it's vital that the pharmacist confirm the accessibility of the acceptability of this action within the patient. If a number of options exist, the patient must be given sufficient information to select to be able to select the most appropriate option, the most right option for this patient. So you are providing the right pharmaceutical care for the right patient. Remember, you always write the, uh, you always provide right pharmaceutical care to the right patient. You are not treating symptoms. You are not treating numbers. You are treating a human being. This is an important advice. You should or you must remember when you provide the pharmaceutical care. You are treating a human being. You are not treating symptoms. You are not treating numbers. Come from the lab test. You are comprehensively, systematically, structurally treated patient by providing the rationale and evidence-based medicine or pharmacy practice. Third is to develop a monitoring strategy. A monitoring strategy is important and should be identified to measure progress toward achievement of the therapeutic goals, of the therapeutic objectives, of your therapeutic aims of the pharmaceutical care. This strategy should be agreed within the patient and other members of the healthcare team. The agreement is, is important. We describe and we stress on the agreement issue in the previous lecture when we talked about education, uh, when we talked about uh, counseling, education, concordance, uh, in, rel in a relative to counseling, uh, adherence and concordance respectively. Uh, then at the end you have to document the care plan the pharmacist record of drug therapy problems therapeutic objective together with the proposed action from the uh, a documented pharmaceutical care plan good documentation facilitate um, uh, the providing of the pharmaceutical care and uh, also facilitate researching and having clinical audit so documentation of the care plan means that you are here working it's important for you. It's important for you to document the care plan so that you can go back if uh, later to uh, assess whether you, the pharmaceutical plan given is rational or not. So in step two, um, this case, in this case you have to apply the concept of step two to develop a care plan to resolve and or prevent drug therapy problem. You have to prioritize the drug therapy problem once, once identified in step one. So let's take this example, which is case 2.4. Mr. D, aged 52 years, uh, has been diagnosed with hyperlipidemia and advised on diet and lifestyle measure for the past year. His medical history include hypertension and atrial fibrillation. His blood pressure was recently measured as 140 over 85 millimeter of mercury, uh, pulse uh, 40 beats per minute, and lipid screenshot total cholesterol void uh, of 8.4 millimole per liter. On the interview, patient complained of tiredness and weight gain. The current drug therapy is as follow amidarone. 200 milligram in the morning, bendroflomethiazide 10 milligram in the morning. So, this patient is receiving amidarone for treatment of AF and also bendroflomethiazide for hypertension treatment. So, drug therapy problems are identified in case 2.4, not 3.4. This is just an error. So, this is for case 2.4. First of all, you have to identify the type of drug therapy problem. Then you describe it, you assess whether uh, uh, um, this is a high priority or low priority or medium priority for you to start uh, the pharmaceutical with. For example, let's take uh, the first example, taking or receiving too much of correct drug potential problem, okay? So high dose thiazide may contribute to hyperlipidemia. So you have to reduce the dose, counsel the patient, and monitor blood pressure. But this is uh, uh, reported to be a low priority for this patient. Okay, so you have to prioritize drug therapy problem one, two, three, four. So one is high, two is medium, and let's say three uh, is low. 
So this is like three for this patient. It's not number one uh, step that you want to start with when providing pharmaceutical care. Then the second one is experiencing a drug reaction. This is a potential problem also. Symptoms may be suggestive of hypothyroidism due to amidolone therapy. You have to check try iodothyroidine level and thyroxine, T3 and T4, and thyroid stimulating factor, TSH. This is highly important because this patient may, the, the symptoms complain of tiredness and weight gain is, uh, can be uh, referred to a disease that is not identified or not diagnosed in this patient, which is like hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism and the thyroid level have uh, like an effect on exacerbating AF atrial fibrillation disease. This is highly important. This is a high priority. You have to uh, discuss with patient to collect information. Then if you think it's highly important and you decide you prioritize this uh, uh, potential problem, then you refer back. You call the doctor and you refer back. You call the doctor to explain uh, uh, to the doctor correctly and then you refer back patient to the doctor. Number three. So this is sorry uh, this is a high and this is classified as step one in prioritizing um, a drug therapy problem number three is needing pharmacotherapy but not receiving it this is an actual problem patient has an af and is as considerable gas uh, sorry patient has an af and is at considerable cardiovascular risk statin is indicated to reduce cholesterol to five millimole or less but this is also low priority, okay? It's not the, 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 the first or the second priority. So it's not high or medium priority. It's low priority for the patient. Needing pharmacotherapy and not receiving it. This is also an actual uh, problem. Warfarin is indicated for treatment of atrial fibrillation. You have to initiate therapy. You counsel and monitor the INR for the patient, the international normalized ratio. Here is, um, to be honest, this depend on on the assessment to the case. It could be medium to high priority. It could be step one or step two. But because we don't have any further information, it's classified as a step two. Here you have to refer patient back to um, uh, to uh, the cardiologist. So in step two, you identify desired, desired therapeutic objective and proposed action. And the statement should be made by a pharmacist about what pharmacists intend to achieve for a patient in relation to each drug therapy problem. The statement should be agreed within the patient. This is important. And healthcare team also. Uh, these therapeutic objectives should be expressed as measurable outcome to be achieved within the defined time scale. In deciding the most appropriate action, it's vital that the pharmacist confirm the accessibility of these action within the patient. If a number of treatment options exist, the patient must be given sufficient information to select the most appropriate treatment option for them. The second one is to develop monitoring strategy, and it should be identified to measure progress toward achievement of the therapeutic goals or the therapeutic objectives. The strategy should be agreed, again, with the patient and other member of the healthcare team and should be undertaken at specified interval and for defined period prior to the further review. Document the care plan. You have to document the care plan. As we previously said, the pharmacist record of drug therapy problem and therapeutic objectives together with the proposed action form a documented pharmaceutical care plan. Good documentation facilitate the continuity of care and help researching and making clinical audit. Here, uh, step three, I think uh, we will step, uh, so, sorry, we, we will stop here. Be, uh, and then in the second part, uh, next lecture, we will uh, describe uh, and talk about step three and four. But uh, for you, there is a homework. Uh, I, I need you to read this case uh, carefully and you develop a pharmaceutical care plan for this patient. So this task two, is a homework again and you have to uh, develop a pharmaceutical care plan for Mrs. Uh, uh, G. Uh, I will stop uh, uh, now uh, as I finished uh, uh, the uh, part one of uh, lecture three. Um, uh, Insha'Allah, uh, next lecture we will um, uh, talk about uh, part two and we will finish uh, lecture is um, uh, lecture three okay
So goodbye and we'll see you soon in part two.